to the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge now. They're in the Caribbean this week, but the trip hasn't gone off to the smoothest start. They were forced to cancel a visit to a cocoa farm in Belize after protests from villagers there. There are more demonstrations expected tomorrow when the royal couple land in Jamaica. Joining me now is Dr Emily Zobel Marshall, who's a reader in post-colonial literature at Leeds Beckett University. Welcome to the programme. Just talk us through those protests in Belize first. What exactly was it about, do you think? Hello, and thank you for having me on the programme, uh, Sean. Yes, yeah, so in Belize, there's been protests against the, uh, the plane landing on a sports field. Uh, there's disputes around uh, indigenous land. And uh, as you can see, they are pro protesters are carrying placards, um, talking about uh, uh, making sure that, um, you know, Prince William does not take the land. Um, and, and so there's further protests as well uh, due in Jamaica um, uh, tomorrow, which are going to be around the issue of reparations um, and also an apology for enslavement um, and colonialism. So, so these issues uh, run deep. Uh, the legacies of enslavement and colonialism are ongoing and uh, the, uh, the, the, the Duke and Duchess are, are seen in many ways as being on a, a charm offensive in the Caribbean to try and make sure that those countries that still have the Queen as the head of state continue to do so. Yes, when Barbados moved from a realm to uh, a republic, Prince Charles, of course, acknowledged the atrocity of slavery. Do you think Jamaica will be wanting to go the same way as Barbados? I imagine that's the direction that they will be going, uh, yes. And, and, and Prince Charles did recognise uh, the atrocity of slavery. Um, but uh, removing the Queen as a head of state is a symbolic action. Um, it's a, an untethering from uh, a hierarchy which is very much rooted in that colonial past. Um, Barbados has done it, and I think that the feeling amongst many people in the English-speaking Caribbean is that uh, Mia Motley is a strong leader and she's just taken a decisive action on this front, and, and I think she's greatly admired. And I think that's probably why there is uh, this anxiety around uh, the Jamaica following suit. And, and this is the reason for this, this royal tour. I'm just reading something that the Equalities Minister, Kami Badenoch, um, suggested today, that the British Empire brought good things to communities, um, urging them to tell both sides of history. Do you feel the same way? Uh, no, I don't feel the same way. Uh, I don't think that the British Empire brought good things to communities. Uh, Britain exploited a great deal of the world, um, took land, indentured people, enslaved people, and um, we're still uh, reaping the rewards of that in our society today in terms of the privileges we enjoy. Um, and many of those countries that were former colonies are struggling as a result. So I think the legacies are, are long lasting. I don't think it's a case of there's two sides to this story. OK, Dr Emily Zobel Marshall, reader in post-colonial literature at Lees Beckett University. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.